Hi boys and girls. Well, this is our fourth Fisher Kids Club online. It seems like it's been so long since we could gather together in our adventure room for our mission time. Mr. Gary and I really miss you and we pray that you are enjoying your safe at home time so that you can stay healthy. We are happy you are able to keep up with our mission story with these online lessons. Now, if you remember when we were together last week, John Payton was up a tree. He had been there for hours and he was really getting so tired. He had climbed to the top of one of the tallest trees on the entire island. And if he fell asleep, he would surely come crashing to his death. John had heard the sounds of war, and then he heard the jungle become quiet, except for the night creatures that chirped and howled and buzzed in the moonlight. John could see a little glint of some moonlight on the ocean waves far away. But John would stay until he was sure he was rescued by the tribe that had been friendly to him. Finally, after many, many hours, John heard the voice of the chief's son who had brought him to this treetop hiding place. Missy, Missy John, you can come down now. Our tribe has driven off the ones who came to make war. John was reunited with Chief Noor. The time of peace would not last long. The chief knew God had helped his tribe drive back the invading tribe, but the chief thought it was time for John to leave. They are jealous of you being here. They will use anything to make an excuse for war, but we don't know how long we can keep you safe. There is a ship coming to the side of the island soon, and I think you should go. John agreed with the chief. You are right, chief, said John. I believe God is leading me to leave but only for a little while. I'm going to go and gather helpers so that we can win more tribes to the Lord Jesus. John knew that the missionaries who were at work in the islands were scattered far and away from each other. They were greatly outnumbered by the island natives, and even though some were friends, there, were, there was always so much loneliness and danger John thought if he could take some time and try to convince others to come, why, they could build churches and schools and medical centers. He felt God wanted to do a mighty work in these beautiful islands. Life here could be so wonderful if only people would stop fighting each other. John did get on that ship that arrived and he sailed to Australia. It took many days for the ship to make its way back to the port city of Sydney. Now, if this was a big city in Australia, and there were many churches and many Christians. Soon, John found a church that would let him speak to the congregation. John thought the church taught the church members about the beautiful islands of Vanuatu. Now, do you remember back in John's day, those islands were called the New Hebrides Islands. Well, he told the good and the bad of the story of these people. The congregation was shocked to learn of the war and the cruel ways that the islanders treated each other. But they were encouraged when John told them of the ones who had come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and how their lives had completely changed. The Lord's power had done that, and it was wonderful to see. The people in the churches listened to John, and they spread the word to others. Soon, John was going from place to place to teach people of the need for mission work in these islands. Church members began to give offerings to help support the people who were volunteering to go to the islands as missionaries. John encouraged people to go, and he helped them to get prepared. And the church members supported their efforts by giving their donations. John was away from the islands for a few years, and he was very successful in recruiting many helpers for this great mission effort. He preached and he taught people, and he even wrote books during this time. 
Now something else happened during this time. While John was serving the Lord and working in Australia, he also, the Lord brought a Christian lady into his life and John got married again. Do you remember the part of the story so long ago about how John's first wife and child died just months after they had arrived on the islands? Now John and his new wife would head back to the islands that John had loved so long. Finally, when the time came for him to return, the Lord led him to a different island called Aniwa. The people of this island spoke a different language, and John and his wife began to work hard to understand what the people were saying so they could learn to communicate with them. John began work on building a house. Some of the natives came, and they seemed curious, and they even offered to help. This gave John lots of time to practice talking to them and to trying to learn words. While they were building the house, one day, uh, on those days, John and his wife lived in a tent pitched closer to the shore. The work continued and John was picking up on the language. He felt good about making progress with the people of Aniwa. One day, when working on the house, John ran out of nails. He thought he would send one of the natives down to the shore to get some more from his wife, but he knew that the native would not know how to tell her what they wanted. So John took a smooth piece of wood and he wrote a note to his wife. And he said to the man, take this to my wife. The wood will speak to her. Now the chief heard this and he was very curious. How could a piece of wood speak? When the young man showed up at the tent where John's wife was, she looked at the wood and knew exactly what John wanted, and she sent the young man back with a packet of nails. The chief and the tribal elders were amazed. It made them want to learn John's language, and they wanted him to teach them how to read and write. John and his wife worked on teaching the natives about Jesus. They were not as warlike as some of the natives had been on the other islands, but they were still not ready to turn from their gods and follow this new God, Jesus, that John had come to teach them about. John taught Bible stories and songs, and he told the people how much God loved them. He told the people of the amazing things that the Lord Jesus did when he was here on earth how he could walk on water, and how he healed people, and how he even brought people back from the dead. And the biggest part of the story about how Jesus died on the cross to pay for all of the wrong things that people had done, and that Jesus was buried, but three days later, Jesus came back to life. He was so powerful that he could even raise himself from the dead. Now, the tribal leaders were really interested in that part. They knew a lot about death, but they had never heard of anyone coming back to life. That part seemed really hard for them to believe. This new God was so different from anything they had ever known. John was praying and praying for ways to help the people of Aniwa to understand God's power and God's love for them. A, an idea came to John one day. You see, the island of Aniwa had a problem. There were only two small freshwater ponds, and the people were often without good clean water. Oh, they worked hard to collect rainwater every time there was a storm. But when the drier days came, they were always worried about running out of water. They were surrounded by the beautiful ocean, but they knew if you drink the salt water, it will make you sick. John called the tribal leaders together and he said, I have prayed to God and I think he has given me a plan to help you with the shortage of the water you have here on the island. We will dig a deep hole and find water in the ground. Of course, John was talking about digging a well, which is something that he had seen done many times back in his homeland of Scotland. 
but the islanders had never seen a well and when john talked about getting rain from the ground they thought he was crazy missy john you are confused rain does not come from the ground it comes from the sky why would your god tell you such a thing they asked god made the heavens and the earth said john in the bible god tells stories about his people praying and digging in the earth to find water well i have prayed that god would guide us to find water like those people did and i believe he will oh the natives were all watching as john prayed and prayed and he walked and walked and and he walked around until he felt that he was in a place that just might be good and then john began to dig now that was not an easy job to do the natives watched they were curious but they still thought john was crazy we better watch him said one of the tribal leaders he is crazy and he might even hurt himself john went on digging he dug and dug and pulled the sand into buckets and put it out on the shore and went down into the hole he was tired and sore but the hole got deeper then john thought of a way to get some of the men to help him men i have some really good fish hooks and you may have them if you will help me dig now fish hooks were a very valuable thing to have on in this island community so several of the men said well yes missy we'll help you dig all of the men were digging and digging and who by the end of the day that hole was 12 feet deep they were all so tired We'll stop for today and come back tomorrow, said John. Everyone went home to rest, and the next morning, very early, the leaders and John came back to the hole. They still thought John was crazy, but some of those men thought, oh, my neighbor got a fish hook yesterday. I will help Missy John dig today, and I'll get one of those wonderful fish hooks. So they all gathered back to the place where they had been digging the hole, and there were all the tools waiting, ready for the men to start digging again. But when they got to the hole, they could not believe what they saw. They looked and the hole was, oh kids, we're out of time. You're gonna have to find out the next part of the story next week at Fisher Kids Club.